We've been doing a lot of Harry Potter lately, and you're welcome. Hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. Welcome back to the channel. You are here for another round of 365 days of soap and today we are making the Norberts uh, from the Harry Potter inspired soap line and I really enjoy doing this pour. It is in a slab mold and it is using a technique called the dancing funnel. Now the dancing funnel essentially is meant to mimic what like a dragon's egg looks like and as far as the dragon egg look it doesn't really look like it's described in the book and it also doesn't look like the, how they depicted it in the movies. And that's okay. I really do like mixing up this pour every time I do it and essentially doing a different type of dragon for each new batch I make. So this one is going to be different than the original one we put out for the Norbert, uh, and you know, different from the, the last several batches that we've made. But before, you know, I get too far into telling you about that here, let's go there and tell you in the video. So today we are doing the Noberta in the Harry Potter inspired soap line. And this is book six, the, uh, the Dragon's Blood Prince soap. Like, you know, the half blood prince. It, yeah, so anyway, this is a slab pour, which is a lot of fun. And it is using a dancing funnel pour which is like the faux funnel and both are equally confusing because you do not use a funnel in either one but before we get into you know what that actually looks like or whatever we're doing prep work right now and so i'm going to show you what not emulsified soap looks like and see how it's breaking up there a little bit yep it's not quite ready now i do want this one just an emulsification now the reason i want it there is because not quite it's still separating on the bottom there you can totally see that and you can see it in the pot as well that we still have some separation going on you know on the sides but anyway the reason why I want this at emulsification and kind of no further is because I sent this particular guy there you go with dragon's blood now dragon's blood is an essential oil blend that kind of varies from person to person and batch to batch but it has the same sort of like overall tonal notes to it and dragon's blood tends to accelerate trace and that would be fine if I were doing a less complex pour but I'm not I'm doing an actual you know kind of difficult pour and uh, it's not it's not difficult it's advanced nothing is really difficult in soap making per se it's just it's advanced and so as a result you want to keep your soap batter pretty fluid for this because we're putting these things in squeeze bottles and then you're like squeezing it into the slab and there's you know more on the pour you know, later but yeah for this reason we do want to keep the soap batter you know reasonably fluid now this is being colored with three colors we have a, a dark green a mid green and then a copper that will be sort of poured on top of each other over and over and over again within the slab and I know this is not what the Norberta dragon's eggs really look like. I mean, in the in the book, it's described as a huge black egg, right? And Norberta is a Norwegian ridgeback and, you know, a, a big black dragon. And so I could have gone, you know, black. And I did, I think, for the first bar that I made with uh, the Harry Potter inspired line. 
because that's super easy because dragon's blood it also tends to discolor so it's actually very easy to you know you put activate charcoal in it you have two layers of you know the black and the gray and you make the dragon's egg look like that and it's great um, and in the movie it's actually depicted as like this really kind of marble-esque effect which is also cool so this is nothing like either one of those really because I like to change the dragon's egg color um, every time I pour this batch just a little bit to kind of represent the other you know dragon's eggs that exist within the, the Harry Potter universe and so this particular batch where you're doing you know a green and copper one because that's pretty and cool and fun and yeah I, I, I make the soap so I guess I get to, to make the rules but no I am well aware that it is not you know completely and strictly accurate to you know Rowling's initial depiction of this now once everything has been colored and scented we are going to pour everything into squeeze bottles now again because the dragon's blood discolors I have to work very quickly with all this and I also kind of cheat the dancing funnel a little bit in all of this and I will show you what I mean you know in just a moment but for now it's you know finishing of the the pour here and getting ready to go so for the pour of this guy as I said I kind of cheat because again the dragon's blood accelerates trace and so especially concerning the fact that I make clay soaps so there's already clay in the batter and it's already making it you know thick I have to do kind of a cheaters method for the dancing funnel now the dancing funnel is sort of a variation on the faux funnel slap pour technique so the faux funnel is again it's confusing because you don't use a a funnel which I guess is why it's called a faux funnel but then you know you have the dancing funnel and that totally suggests like you use like you use a funnel but you don't you use you know the, the squeeze bottles to, to do the thing and the idea is you are going to you know place like circles on top of circles and then circles in between circles in order to create this kind of cool like you know almost like soap bubble type effect which is it's a fun pour it's a it's a really fun pour to do when you don't have batter that's you know gets thick overly fast but I like to make my life complicated so I of course had to scent this dragon's blood because what else was I going to scent it with it's you know it's a dragon egg and so I kind of do this instead of doing a, a proper you know faux dancing funnel pour thing and by this what I mean is I lay about half the batter down to the slab and then give it a swirl with the uh, the skewer to create a sort of base layer that everything else goes on so just in case the batch accelerates too quickly I will still be able to accomplish something that sort of resembles you know a dragon's egg so the dancing funnel you put your first color down and then you take your second color in little dots directly on top of the first color circles that you have placed and by on top of what I actually mean is inside of now it's, this is a spe this is important especially when you are working with batter that is you know thickening up too quickly you want to put the nozzle of your your uh, thing there into the soap batter underneath like directly into not for this one because you're pouring it on top for the first layer that that's completely fine but in order to really spread out that first layer with the second color you want to put the nozzle of your your, your bottle actually inside the soap to really spread out you know the bottom layer and you're gonna do the first the same thing for the third color as well and that is going to be the best way that you can like super cheat this process if your batter is too thick. If you, you know, soaked past, past emulsification, you got to thin trace or even a medium trace, this is going to be a way to really still achieve the dancing funnel without, well, I mean, without failing, really. Like, you can still get a decent da dancing funnel out of this. Now, you see my, my soap batter, it's it is too thick to really do this very well and that's again because of the the dragon's blood that's in it and that's accelerating trace but also because of the fact that I, I make the soaps and so things just trace a lot faster now we're going to continue on in this you know line with all the the dots throughout the entirety of 
the, the slab mold. And then, you know, adding the, the copper on top of that and the lighter green uh, on top of that, really spreading out those circles so they, you know, touch or get close to touching. Now, with something like this, I usually hate doing anything that involves squeeze bottles because cleaning the squeeze bottles is not fun. And I actually saw like a, a hack at some point where somebody had used like those air pack things that you get in like Amazon shipments, you know, when you buy like one teeny tiny thing like a pen and they ship it in a gigantic box with a couple air packs sort of thrown in, like it, it's so weird. But I saw a hack where they cut that open and then used that as a, um, a liner for their squeeze bottles. And I haven't actually used it, but I've been intrigued and I thought that would be a cool thing to do. And it turned out that with all the orders I've been shipping, because I sort of recycle all of my, my packaging, right? So when I get something from Amazon, I then take that packaging and use it for my padding for an order. I'm actually running low, and for the first time in quite a while, because I'm shipping so many orders, I had to buy you know new packaging, so I didn't have any. Anyway, once the initial round of circles are put down, you are then going to put more circles in between, so at the joins of all of the circles that you have already laid down, right? So at all of the sort of intersection points of the circles. And then you're going to do the same thing that you did with the, you know, the first set of circles in that you're going to, you know, put the dark color down and then your, your second color and then your third color and then, you know, continue to spread out the soap batter to sort of fill the mold in a way that makes sense. So then you see me going over the top with the copper there and then the lighter green will go on top of that. And so far so good, again, I cannot stress enough, put your nozzle of your squeeze bottle into the soap batter underneath it in order to really force the soap batter underneath to, you know, to, to go out. But also this helps you with placement too, to make sure that you have sort of like even-ish circles. And that's good. Yeah, but with the squeeze bottle stuff, I really don't like having to clean them up afterwards. And I don't like the extra waste that's left over in the squeeze bottle because once you get to this point, like you'll see these weird pockets in the copper. My squeeze bottle is getting, uh, you know, empty-ish not so empty that you know there's just nothing left in there but empty enough that when I squeeze it it's you know forcing air out as well and so it's creating these weird kind of holes in the soap and that's not fun honestly when this pour is done I will squeeze out a full bars worth of soap batter that did not get into the mold and I don't like that because that means that I have to like resize my batch to make sure that all of the soaps are the appropriate, you know, thickness and weight and everything in order to sell. And that's not a lot of fun for me. I mean, it's cool because the, that bar itself that I, you know, squirt out afterwards, that goes into, you know, scratch and dent. It's an everything but the kitchen sink bar. It's a mystery bar. It's cool. But for this pour specifically, I just feel like I'm wasting a lot of soap. Unfortunately, I've tried to do this the cheater's way with using just beakers and pouring out of the beakers or like a long neck, you know, pour spout. The, the squeeze bottles work best and so it kind of is what it is. But yeah, so that's the, the Norbert, that's the pour. It is going to set up overnight and it will see pop because we want to keep these awesome colors. And then we will cut it tomorrow and show you the sort of internal, you know, like layers and see if you can super tell the difference between the, the layer that I laid down and then, you know, skewered and the stuff that's represented, you know, on the top of the bar. So it is day two, it is cut day, and this soap has actually sat for about 16 hours and it is still reasonably soft. Now the reason for that is because this particular oil blend is sitting actually at a, it's like a 70-30 with liquid oils to uh, solid oils. So this bar itself actually takes quite a while to cure up because it's so soft. You have so many liquid oils in it. And that's okay because it's actually 
a sort of modified version of a Bastille soap. And I want that for the performance of the bar, but I don't, you know, it kind of it kind of sucks that it takes so long to, you know, cure. But as long as you plan your line accordingly, everything's, you know, fine and you don't ever run out of stock. Unfortunately, in this case, I did actually run out of stock with the Norberta and yeah, no, I'm replenishing, you know, stock with this and, you know, eight other batches. But anyway, so we cut this with the slab. Again, I hand cut all of my slabs, and once you cut them into six, you know, strips, there you're then going to cut each of those, you know, in half, and you get 12 bars out of this particular batch size. And yeah, when you, you cut them in half and you check out the, the the middle part there, yeah, no, that that circle is basically represented throughout the entire bar. Like you, you have a hard time pinpointing that I, you know, cheated and laid down a layer of soap, you know, before. But yeah, as far as this bar goes, it's, it's a, this was a beautiful pour and it actually stayed more fluid than it usually does, which is good. And it allowed me to legitimately do the, you know, the, the dancing funnel with that. I really like the end light green pieces, right? How they sort of, they stick out of the, the actual, you know, level area of the soap. And that's cool. A lot of soap makers would, you know, plane that off or whatever, but I actually like the texture that it adds to it because it's a dragon's egg and it should be kind of textured and rough on, on the top. And it, it, I think it adds some interest to the bar. But yeah, that is uh, the Norberta. Again, it's a uh, book six, so the Dragon's Blood Prince in the Harry Potter inspired, you know, soaps, scented with Dragon's Blood essential oil. It's absolutely delightful, and you know, all of your fandom awesomeness right there in one place. What more could you really ask for in life? There you have it, the Norbert uh, in the dancing funnel pour technique. Now, with the dancing funnel, you definitely do need to pay attention to the fluidity of your batter, right? You do want to make sure that it stays reasonably thin so you have enough time to actually get all of the circles in and then, you know, they're built on top and then, then the ones in between. And with mine, I knew that I was working with some disadvantages from the very beginning because A, I work with clay soaps and so my batter is always going to be thicker than, you know, other soap makers. And two, I was using the Dragon's Blood scent and that is always going to speed up trace. But if you pay attention to the pro tips I gave you within the, uh, the video itself, you will have a reasonably successful dancing funnel pour, you know, every time, regardless of how thick your batter gets. Anyway, I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video today. If you are interested in purchasing the Norbert uh, you can find that on, this, on the website at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in any of the other Harry Potter inspired soaps, also at soapandclay.com. And yeah, you know, you're, you're here and you're interested in this and something, and I really appreciate that. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel and do the things that would, you know, make me very happy. And that's always great. And if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do the things. I'm at Soap and Clay on Twitter and Instagram, and I don't even use soap on Facebook. Thank you so much for another round of 365 days of soap, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.